Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our Periodontic series. So here's a reminder of all the categories that the board exam tests in periodontics. So far, we've covered diagnosis of periodontal disease, including different classifications for things like furcation involvement and gingival recession. We also talked extensively about etiology, like plaque and other local factors. This video will cover the high yield information for the periodontal disease process, focusing on what you need to know for the board exam. And in later videos, we'll talk about treatment planning, prognosis, and the heavily requested periodontal treatment, both surgical and non-surgical. Then we'll finish up by talking about prevention and maintenance. So like I mentioned in the very first video, periodontal disease is an interplay between bacteria and the host. Plaque is the initiating factor, and the host responds often damaging its own tissue in order to protect itself. So it's important to talk about the immune cells that play a part in this response. So the first cell we'll talk about is the neutrophil, and neutrophils are the first line of defense, and they're considered the most important cells involved in controlling this bacterial challenge and destroying periodontal tissue via release of destructive molecules. So all of those bacteria that we talked about in the third video, like P. gingivalis and all of these other pathogenic bacteria are the attackers. Neutrophils are the primary defenders. So neutrophils are gonna migrate from blood vessels that are underneath the gingiva into the periodontal pocket by direct, directed locomotion known as chemotaxis where they form a barrier to protect the body from these periodontal pathogenic bacteria. They internalize the bacteria via phagocytosis, so they eat them and then kill them using this biologic bleach. It's a really nasty chemical of myeloperoxide and oxygen radicals. So this stuff is nasty for the bacteria and they can't really survive with this mix of chemicals. MMP8, also known as neutrophil collagenase, is the most important proteinase involved in destruction of periodontal tissues, and it's inhibited by this antibiotic tetracycline. So MMPs are really important destructive enzymes to know, and they'll come up again later in the video. And basically what this slide is saying is that neutrophils are the first responders, they sniff out the invading bacteria, follow where they are by chemotaxis, eat them by phagocytosis, and then release uh, strong destructive enzymes that not only kill the bacteria uh, inside of them, but they also destroy periodontal tissue around them. So neutrophils, like any cell in the body, can perform not well, and there, there can be abnormalities associated with them. So defective neutrophil chemotaxis, for example, can lead to aggressive periodontitis. So we talked about certain bacteria that can cause aggressive periodontitis. That would be the really long name, Agregatibacter actinomycetin comatans. We remember that because the AA bacteria causes the A form of periodontitis. But also a problem with the own body response can cause this form of periodontitis as well. So that's important to know. The problem with neutrophils and when they don't work properly is it's a lose-lose situation. If you have too much neutrophil activity, you can cause too much tissue destruction. And if you have too little, it can lead to an unchecked bacteria challenge, which also leads to tissue destruction. So it has to be just right in order to uh, prevent this unnecessary tissue damage, but of course, the best possible scenario is to not have these invading pathogenic bacteria. And other neutrophil abnormalities include these. Uh, I, I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't need to know those for the board exam, so don't worry so much about those. So the next uh, immune cell we'll talk about is the macrophage, and these are antigen-presenting cells, including monocytes and dendritic cells. And they regulate the immune response by releasing cytokines like IL-8. Mast cells are also involved. 
they uh, perform vascular permeability, they cause vascular permeability and dilation of blood vessels, and they're really well known to produce IgE. This is immunoglobulin E, and they're antibodies that are uh, famously produced by mast cells. So this is a pretty common board question. Uh, part one and part two uh, boards could ask this sort of question. So remembering IgE is always associated with the mast cell. And lymphocytes is another category of, Im of immune cells to know for the periodontal response. So B cells become plasma cells and make antibodies. The T helper cells um, also known as CD4 cells, that's because the CD4 is a glycoprotein found on the surface of these cells, and they help with communication between all the different immune cells. The T cytotoxic cells, also called CD8 cells because CD8 is a glycoprotein found on the surface of these cells, they directly kill intracellular antigens. And then we have NK cells, which stands for natural killer cells. They're a specific type of T cell that can recognize and kill tumor and virally infected cells. So all of these cells can, um, of course, like the macrophages and the mast cells and the neutrophils, there's a lot of interplay in the immune system. And so each of these has a very specific role to play when responding to any sort of infection. So the pro-inflammatory mediators are listed here. These are those uh, chemicals that favor the destructive nature of periodontal disease, where the body destroys itself in order to protect itself from the periodontal pathogens. That's that sort of innate irony of periodontal disease, or the oxymoron of periodontal disease. So for these, maybe don't remember all the specific numbers if you have room uh, for this kind of information, that's great. If not, I would walk away knowing MMPs is the most important thing to take away from this video. MMP stands for matrix metalloproteinase, and proteinase, uh, anything that's an ace is an enzyme, and so it eats proteins. That's what proteinase means, and that's exactly what it does. It destroys the most common protein in the human body, which is collagen. So MMPs destroying collagen, and collagen's certainly present in the gingiva, so it's going to be causing a lot of localized tissue damage, and is a primary mediator in the periodontal tissue destruction process. So definitely no MMPs. And those are released again by the neutrophils. And just like we have pro-inflammatory medi mediators, we also have anti-inflammatory mediators. And those are some of the ones listed below. And so these oppose that tissue destruction. So it's a constant balance between pro and anti-inflammatory mediators, both of which are sort of sitting on opposite ends of a seesaw. So some specifics, the pathogenesis of gingivitis. There are four different stages outlined here. Uh, the initial lesion occurs within two to four days, and it starts with neutrophil infiltration. Again, that's that first line of defense by the human body. Stage two is considered an early lesion. That's from four to seven days. And the T lymphocytes are the next cell to sort of step up to the plate and attack. Uh, and when you see the early lesion, you see increased collagen loss and bleeding on probing. So more classic signs of gingival inflammation. Stage three is considered an established lesion. This is 14 to 21 days. And then the B cells step up to the plate. They infiltrate, including uh, mature, they also uh, grow into mature plasma cells. So they're releasing antibodies and causing more collagen loss clinical changes in color, contour, and consistency. Again, those are our three C's associated with gingivitis. So now we're really getting into an established gingivitis situation. And stage four, an advanced lesion, this is where we get transition to irreversible damage. Again, all this, these first three stages are the reversible stages of gingivitis. Once we get bone loss, 
at stage 4, that irreversible damage, now we've transitioned to periodontitis, where we have irreversible tissue damage. So as mentioned before, environmental and systemic factors like smoking and diabetes might influence the progression of periodontal disease, but these things don't cause disease. Again, without plaque, you're not going to get this immune response, you're not going to get periodontal disease. So thanks again for watching everyone, I hope you found this video helpful in your studies, and we'll see you all in the next video.